Good evening. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness, or two or three sometimes. Um, I would sort of encourage you to get a piece of paper and a pencil. And the reason for that is uh, I'm going to share a survey with you. And um, I thought it'd be kind of fun if, as you recognize things, you would mark it off. Um, it's going to be an exciting show. It's going to be about star seeds. And the reason for that is when we did the indigenous show, we aired at 9 o'clock. By 9.14, I was on the phone explaining to people what star seeds were or star people because they said, well, why don't you explain something? And I said, well, that's for another time. So today is that time. So while you're getting your pencil, I'm going to talk about the crop circles for a minute. This is the 1999 crop circle season. And um, right before I crashed my computer, I was lucky enough to get some of them out for you. I understand that there are massive crop circles in Europe, Holland, uh, Germany, lots of them in Germany. We have some in Israel this year. Um, there were a total of 66 formation up on the web page. Uh, the way you arrive at that, you go to my page. That is listed at the end of the show, and today we listed it on the beginning of the show in case you needed to see it twice. Uh, you can go to links and go to the um, crop circle connector and it will give you all the crop circles. My friend Eilis, um, that is the US coordinator for crop circle studies in, uh, in the United States. She's currently in England and she mailed back the first uh, graphic. It is not a picture, rather it is rather a drawing of the first one that arrived in the United States, and this was in, ten uh, this was in Tennessee. In the meantime, we have, some, we have some in Milwaukee, and they are coming in on a daily basis. Um, what I found so interesting is that we had deciphered quite a few of them over the years, and this year it seems like they've taken all the ones that we have deciphered and given, they hooking them together. It's like they say, well, we gave you the words, now here are the sentences. And so Eilis has promised to give us the exclusive when she returns to the US with the pictures. And so I would encourage you to um, go into my webpage and, uh, and look at the crop circles. So hopefully you have your, pe your piece of paper and your pencil um, ready because my guest, Barbara McGuire, and uh, of course, she's the one that had to do this show since you're the one that started it with me on the indigenous That's people, true. you know? Uh -huh. So yeah. you were nice enough to come back and uh, visit with us today. So today's show is on star seed, okay? So what we did is we went into a study um, that we want to share with you, and it was done actually was a survey done by Brad and Francis Steiger in 1980. Now, many of you are familiar with Brad Steiger. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sorry. that's pretty much a household mm -hmm. word. Yeah. The interesting thing is here that this was done in 1980, and they, all they said was it was internationally, internationally done. So we really don't know how many people were polled. Um, we did a survey one time, and... Um, 3% in the survey on something else that we did had amounted to 800,000 people. So when we give you these percentages here, we really don't know it percent of how right. many people. So unfortunately, we don't do that. But even so, you'll probably find it really interesting. Um, the, the question that they had put to, to people is, do you believe of ancestry in the stars, and do you believe that? you are part of the sun, uh, I'm sorry, star generation. In 1980, 36% said yes, there were star seeds. 47% said there were star helpers. And 17% were fascinated with the work that was being done. Your turn. All right, uh, let's see. 10. Point f I wrote that, point so five the point percent. is in the wrong place, okay. <laughs> Extra transitional vertebrae, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, 15% unusual blood type. 92% lower than normal body temperature. 73% had low blood pressure traits. 84% sensitive to light. 77% sensitive to touch. And 84 were emotional or overly emotional. Mm -hmm. Overly mm -hmm. emotional. 43% thought they were favored, they were favored with children. 92% felt that their parents were not their real parents. That's a high percentage there. 46% mm -hmm. suffer from swollen joints. 69% have back and neck pain. And 60% are affected by high humidity. 81% were aware of their alien heritage before they ever read or heard anything about this. And 96% always had a yearning for wanting to go home uh, somewhere other than Earth. 89% felt great urgency, like working against a time clock. And 80% had been visited by angels, elves, or light beings by the age of five. 80% had unseen friends. 77% heard a whine, clicking, or buzzing prior to a visit or event. And 84% were night people and did their work after sundown. 65% gifted in music. 26% gifted in mathematics. 65% gifted in healing. 42% gifted in acting. 53% gifted in inventions. And 53% gifted in art. And 84% had compelling eyes. So if you read my book, that was one of the major <laughs> issues in my book. 88% are natural empath. 61% oh, were, uh, were drawn to willow trees. And 69% to eagles. 69% to rocks. 92% to stars. This is interesting, 71% to lilacs, 88 to natural crystal, 76 to electrical storms, that's me, and 96% to nature. 92% see bright lights when closing their eyes. And 73% had heard, now is the time. Okay, it says not all remember past lives, but 100% believe in reincarnation. And 88% um, perceive death as a transition, and 90% are drug-free on all fronts, meaning uh, uh, legal and illegal drugs and like tranquilizers and things like that. So 90% of them had never been on drugs. That's this very interesting uh, survey, actually. Yeah, the thing is here, this was done in 1980. Mm -hmm. And so in the meantime, they have had children. And we'll talk about the children a little later. Um, where are we going with this? Well, we're going to answer your questions. What we believe are star seeds or star children. The Egyptians, and we've talked about that in several shows, including the one that was called Akhenaten. Lots of indigenous people believe that their ancestry is, is in the stars. That's right. They believe that, well, they know that they either are descendants of people from different star systems. Mm -hmm. Some of them know that they are implants. And others know that they have the trait of star people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't believe that is done randomly, I believe that runs in families, in order to go back to the ancestors. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on this, when I ask you to fill out the paper, it would be interesting to see how many of the, I believe it was 37, huh? 30, 39, I think. 39. 39. Um, how many of those sounded familiar to you? And uh, so in order to do this show, what we finally got to do is interview Spirit Wolf, 
um, she actually shows up as a real person <laughs> yeah. uh, on, on, on videotape. And um, you went all the way to Oregon. Yes, went all the way to Oregon to interview her. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was gracious enough to answer our question about what she thought about star people mm -hmm. or star seeds. Mm -hmm. In fact, we gave her a choice. We, I said she can talk about anything she wants to. So by coincidence, right. that's she wanted what to, she wanted yeah, to, talk, she about. to talk about. And so we're going to share that with you and then get back to um, the rest of the show. And so if we could please play that clip with Spirit Wolf. Um, your sister, my friend, and uh, a fellow star person. Uh, great time for our friends out there. We've got Spirit Wolf in person, uh, doing an interview with her uh, about star people and uh, star seeds to see her uh, ideas on what they are and where they come from. Uh, hear Thank you, you Barbara. Say. Yatehe and Masematakeoyase, which means to all my relation out there. Um, my view on uh, star people, of course, is is legend among the native people for many, many years, and uh, very much believe in the star people. As a matter of fact, one of the legends of the Cherokee people is that they are were originally from um, the Pleiades, which is our star system, of course, that you can see. The seven sisters they're called so that's legend that was carried on down through the Native American people especially the Cherokee culture my belief is that um, there are people here among us now who not are just direct descendants from the star people but who are coming down at this point and working here with the people in the universe and this is of course a good time because we are in need of um, learning how to better prepare ourselves for the millennium which I believe is just a change in consciousness yes I agree I, I don't believe that um, there's catastrophe and that kind of thing although I do believe that collective consciousness has a lot to do with what will affect certain areas that you're living in and uh, this is uh, part of what we have learned from the star people that what we believe so will we attract so if you're in an area where there's a concentration of people believing that there is going to be catastrophe then that's what you're going to get that's true so it's real important at this point to um, gather a lot of people who have the same belief system as far as peace and harmony go and that's what we're trying to do in Iowa I live in, um, in a town called Mount Vernon, Iowa, and uh, the group of people I have, we are all concentrating on uh, peace for our universe. So, and we and we drum to that because we believe that each one drum equals ten people. So we have four hundred people all drumming for peace and harmony. I believe that's what we'll have. That's wonderful. So we don't have where I'm at. There's not a lot of catastrophe, so on and so forth. But as far as star seed goes. I believe that that means that there are people who are seated here from the other planets who are here to help us to understand that our way of thinking has a lot to do with whether or not we will live on an earth that is um, harmonious and of course spiritual. And in order to be spiritual, I believe you have to have harmony and peace in your life. This is true. So that is um, one of the um, important messages that, as far as myself, I, I believe that I am a star person. Um, I believe I am a descendant from the Pleiades, as I believe that all my siblings are also. Um, because we are different. We have different views, we have different ideals, and we seem to be able to see things in a, in a different way than other people do. I believe that we're very aware of what's around us. So it's like we are here to bring about a change that will cause people to become more aware and more understanding of one another. And I, and I really believe 
um, from what I collect from the universal consciousness, whatever you choose to cause, uh, call it, the great spirit or whatever that all is, all knowingness for you. From what I receive is the one most important aspect of all of this awareness and all of this consciousness is that it's time to really truly love one another unconditionally. It's the unconditional love that is going to change this universe. That's right. Um, not, um, it doesn't matter what your belief is. It doesn't matter what your uh, religion is. I don't particularly have a religion. I have a spirituality. And that to me is one of the most important aspects of my whole life. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And so we, a lot of people have been uh, giving us feedback on that very thing. Uh, we're learning more and more about uh, different groups of people who are trying to do the universal love and consciousness. And with your 400 drums, I think you've got a good start there. I believe so. And, and it's growing. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And, and I do believe that a lot of the, um, the ceremony that was brought to the Native people was brought here by the Star people. Because it's um, from some of the legends that are, were passed on down um, to the ancestors that they said that they, their self, that this came from um, the sky, the stars, that their knowledge, their wisdom, their ceremonies came from the sky people. From the sky people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's, it's really nothing that seems new or unusual to me. As it isn't to you, right? You know, we've we've grown up with it, and um, it just seems perfectly natural and normal to me to believe that um, there are other systems in the universe. I mean, after all, it would be totally ignorant to think that the Great Spirit would create this one planet with all these other solar systems and stars to think that we were the only ones here. I mean, what would be the point in having all those other things yes. if there was not other life forms in that those, on those planets or stars or whatever? I mean, that is just, it's ignorance to it's me. It's more, uh, yeah, we, figure, we feel that the, uh, the Creator is uh, experiencing in many different forms, in many different ways, on many different planets, many different oceans. Exactly. It, my, and, and also, too, you know, if you listen to legend and you allow yourself to pay attention to what the Native American is saying, is that um, we are here for a specific purpose, of course. We all are. All of us have a purpose here. And to understand and realize that, that um, we are here because we are trying to enlighten self and grow from that enlightenment. Then we have a broader view and understanding of why everything is the way it is. And I, and I so much believe in divine order. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe in divine order. And I believe that it's up to us to follow that order. We can choose to or not to. That's great. We, we have free will and there's nothing that will change that. So we listen and we learn from one another. And, and the ancestors were very wise, the elders were very wise, and, and if you choose to listen to their wisdoms, then we can learn a lot from them and carry that on down to our children, or, or to our friends, our neighbors, the people around us, and have a much better life in, in harmony and peace that we need to have here. So I believe that the star people play a very important part in our lives. But it's up to us whether or not we choose to listen to their messages. They're bringing them here all the time. Yeah. Do you believe that other cultures besides Native American have star children and star people? Oh, definitely. I believe the Celts do, the Aboriginals, the African people, all peoples of, of tribal nature. There isn't a one of us in some form or other ancestors. There isn't any one nationality that hasn't had some shamanic person in their life. We all have that shaman within us. 
that menace of person within us. It's whether or not we choose to awaken that spirit within us that says we have the ability to heal, we have the ability to help, we have the ability to learn and be aware. Every culture in this universe has that opportunity to open that within them. Well, I believe we agree with you on that, and um, I want to thank you. We want to thank you very much for letting us interview you on this, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Yes, so you was very lucky. She didn't fade out at one time. It's, <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I guess you're very familiar with Spirit Wolf because we talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter where we go, she just pops in there. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's very, uh, very aware, very much mm -hmm. uh, thinks the way we do. So, of course, mm -hmm. we are going to bring her into our conversations. Yeah, so because, because in, in her, in not if in, excuse me, if you in the physical, she's your sister, but she has quite an impact popping in and out of my life. Oh, you yes. Know? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. So we were happy to do that. We can sort of build a little bit on what she said. Mm -hmm. But other cultures, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to tell you that star person and star seed is not one of the newest fads. No. No. Yeah. That has been there for thousands of years, so just I wanted to clarify that. Right. Okay. Right. I think Zachariah Sitchin has written many things on mm -hmm. uh, people who have uh, seated mm -hmm. uh, human beings here in many different forms, and um, he, of course, is a scientist, and he does it that way. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do it, uh, understand, from a feeling within them. Mm -hmm. uh, some have these symptoms that we mm -hmm. talked about in the survey. So um, there's many different ways of bringing this out and people have been doing it, like you said, for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, on the Akhenaten show, we talked about um, Akhenaten, the extraterrestrial king that came from Sirius. And um, in other shows, we've talked about that because that's what my background is. That's right. Mm -hmm. Then the Maoris of New Zealand, mm -hmm. and the Mayans, and the Anastasis, is the Pleiades, no? Uh, yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. And then there's other star systems I can't even pronounce, so I'm not going there unless right. you want to tackle that. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because uh, I did met, meet a gentleman on one of my trips. Um, he was from, he, he says he was from the star system of Orion. Mm -hmm. And then there was a woman in, South Africa, her name is Elizabeth Clara, that had an actual child with a gentleman from Acta Centuria. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's close enough. Uh, it's you pretty just close. have to call me because I don't yeah. know how to pronounce that. Uh -huh. um, well, I believe that there's quite a bit of that going on, too. Mm -hmm. You know. But this is not to be to be confused with abductions. Oh, That's no. two totally different things. Yeah. And the reason we put a UFO behind us is because it has to do with the stars and, and time the, travel. The traveling mm -hmm. here and whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. But star children and star seeds did not pop in here on a UFO. It yeah. is a, it's a spiritual, a physical and a spiritual awareness, no? Yeah, it is, uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, two years ago, I ran into quite a few six-fingered young people. And we're going to talk about the young people in a few minutes. On one of the other shows, we was also talking about the fact that when we were at Tai that time, and this lady, she was testing enzymes, and people took a blood drop out of people's fingers, and Kiddingly, they said, you know, there's some, you can do a reading on Lillian, those little blood right. drops, and I did. And ever since that day, we thought we were just goofing off at the time. Right. But lo and behold, ever since then, the blood types have just materialized in, in almost everything that we talk about. Well, we know going through the 
transitional um, stage that the earth is going through is not only a physical thing, but it's a spiritual thing, and a, you know. Um, so the physical bodies, our physical bodies, are going through transitions too. Mm -hmm. Like you said, some people's blood types have changed. Exactly. And that's never been heard of that I know of before. Um, I think my brother, for one, had uh, his, he had uh, AB negative, mm -hmm. and then he flipped over to AB positive. Now he's flipped back to AB negative again, mm -hmm. but they, they counted on him for a blood donor, mm -hmm. and so they kept track of him, and they just couldn't believe that he, this happened to him, but it did. Yeah, see, and you see, because the time we live in, things like that no longer escape our attention. That's it's right. like in the olden days, a woman could be married and have two children and another one and two more children with her husband. And those things didn't come to the surface, but now with the DNA testing, and uh, they say there are 12 DNA strains and we use like three or four. Mm -hmm. uh, so now when a woman has a, and this happens all the time, um, is married and has a husband and all of a sudden he has a child that doesn't fit that criteria. Mm -hmm. And so when the child support people come in and run a test, uh, the, something's, it seems that something is wrong there. When in essence it's just, I probably opened the can of worms here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably Because did. some of the fathers probably <laughs> say I told you. <laughs> so, um, well, that was a... I, I guess we needed to give you a laugh because it's really a serious matter. Yeah, but it the is. point is, we have found that. We have, and we found we have found that there are many physical changes going mm -hmm. on uh, in people's uh, bodies, mm -hmm. not only in our spirit and our minds, but our bodies are changing, mm -hmm. and uh, not not for the well for the best. Actually, mm -hmm. we're making us we're becoming more strong and uh, re more resilient and. Um, uh, age should not matter. Uh, exactly, yeah. You know, so, um. Now, this survey was done in 1980, like we told you. Now, the oldest star person I ever ran into was 82. And then was six, one was 69. And then <laughs> it turned out they got younger and younger and younger. Mm -hmm. And which sort of takes us to what I call the blue babies. Right. Mm -hmm. And other people named them the indigos, and I didn't know that for a long time because I don't read very much. Right. So can we talk about the, those? You're talking about the, the um, new ones. The new ones coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, this is very interesting, and um, they have found that, um, that some of these babies are being born with, um, uh, well, actually, they, yeah, I guess they are being born now with it, but they would, First, it started to just happen mm -hmm. later on at the around, around five or six. But they're born with all of the um, codons, which we have uh, 84 in our bodies. And uh, usually, in every human being, only 80 of these are activated, and the other four lay dormant. No one knows why. Well, in these children, they're all activated. These children don't get ill. Um, they don't... Um, they can throw off diseases. So one, one child was born with AIDS, and uh, they followed him through for five years, and he no longer has AIDS. Mm -hmm. But And they, he's the one that they started uh, checking on and found out that all the codons were activated in his body. Mm -hmm. So uh, more and more people are being found this way. They're doing more blood tests, and they're testing for these things. And I think they found, to date, over a million people like this. Mm -hmm. And not all of them are young children, though. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, are getting into be, you know, teenagers and young adults now. So, um, yes, the physical body is changing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, uh, when we have some about the blood types, uh, there's a lady um, in Miami. Three of her family members, they, with just in the last few weeks, have changed blood types, and uh, she was going to email it. But I crashed my computer last night, like I said, so I, I couldn't get that information for you. When Paula Bonine was here, and, and she talked about her young daughter with cerebral palsy, uh, we told you the story that the little girl told us that she remembered when she was born, and she only weighed like two pounds or something. 
and some of the new ones come in with their memory intact. They have a, a speech problem in as much as they don't know how to speak English. Yes. And at mm -hmm. five or six or ten months, they will start telling you in full sentences who they are and why they're here. And um, those children are everywhere. They are so telepathic. I, I believe then they first start noticing these children um, in China mm -hmm. uh, that were born 100% uh, psychic, mm -hmm. and they couldn't believe it. But they they tested them, and of course they would, mm -hmm. and tested them and found out that they were definitely psychic and knew everything that was going on. And since then, uh, they've of course been testing other people and other mm -hmm. children in different countries and have found more of these children. So. But, but the, the odd thing about that is, and it may happen later, but the, the uh, codons in their bodies are not activated. Those four codons are not activated in these children. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what this means because we aren't enlightened on this yet. But mm -hmm. it's a fascinating uh, event that's happening. I don't know if you remember this case or not, but remember up on Stoll's Road, we used to have um, psychic Block parties, we called them. Mm -hmm. And in the neighborhood was um, a lady from, uh, well, wherever she was from. And she had a child that was almost four years old, and he wasn't walking. And uh, but of course, she never came to the party because, you know, she didn't want to um, really be supportive in that area. So eventually, um, I ended up picking up a baby bed out of all things for someone. And that's how. I ended up at her place, uh, you know, on, under other circumstances. And this child wasn't walking, so she asked me what I thought of the whole thing. And so I had a little telepathic talk with him, and I found that it wasn't that he couldn't walk. It was his mother was constantly uh, telepathically, uh, she was thinking, oh, I wish she could stay a baby. Oh, oh, you've grown up too fast. I wish you could just stay my little boy. So because the little boy was so so telepathic, he just wanted to make his mother happy. And <coughs> excuse me. And once we determined that, we just said, it's OK. You know, you can go. And the lady moved away. And from what I understand, the child started walking four days later. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Wrong yeah. messages. Yeah. Yeah. So to, because of the times we live in, be sure you control your thoughts uh, yes, with your children, definitely. not just what you say. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they are just so totally intelligent. Oh, they are. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah, and you, it's, it's hard to be prepared for something like that when you were raised in, in, in not total awareness like that. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you take care of some of these children? Well, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be able to tell you later on themselves, but uh, right now it's a it's very fascinating, and uh, we've we've said before the how um, marvelous and wonderful our new children are, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> certainly showing up that way. Now I'm working on an upcoming show that where I'm going to ask children how they view the universe and uh, things like that, and so I have done several interviews already for my insert that I'm going to play at that time, and one of the children talked about lights and fairies and things like that, and um, which was really fascinating. So one of the things I asked her, what is it you would like to tell the grown-ups? Now, she's um, 10 years old, and she's been seeing things. She was five, right? And it was interesting what she said. She said, when we tell you, we want you to be excited for us and not criticizing. And that pretty much summarizes it. That does. That's, that's a marvelous thing. Mm -hmm. To say, I, I, it's wonderful. I mean, um, I used to see the fairies, and nobody could tell me they weren't there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because uh, definitely they were. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was not able to go to my parents and say that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we hope, and we are trying to help everyone realize: do not tell these children they're not mm -hmm. seeing these things. And, and like she says, be be happy and excited mm -hmm. for them because it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. The other thing is, uh, I like to 
address the ADD children, the deficit disorder children. Um, we touched on that occasionally, mm -hmm. but today is a good time to go into a little more details. Because the frequency of the Earth, um, and the Akhenaten show explained that, um, that just aired a few weeks ago. Because of the frequency of the Earth, we have, we as human beings, we have to go with that. That's right. And we, meaning our age, we just too slow. Yeah, this is true. Okay. We're probably physically still trying to live in the time frame or whatever mm -hmm. that we've always lived in, the vibration exactly. uh, that we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very difficult for some of us to go through this uh, change. But, you know, you have to, I think if you start working on yourself mentally, you know, mm -hmm. spiritually start uh, meditating on it, that you can catch up with the frequency very well. Mm -hmm. You know, don't leave yourself behind there because you're not going to accomplish anything for yourself or anybody else if you do that. Yeah, so in essence, we're going to have to speed up because... We do. You, you see, when we are born, when we come in at the frequency from the time that we are born, and because everything is so speeded up, um, the, the physical Earth is going sort of through a, a, a porthole in the galactic type of... like the whole thing is moving. And uh, if you get on, that, on NASA's email list, uh, they've been pretty liberal in explaining some of these things. So to get back to this frequency, the new children, they are born with the frequency and the speed in which they are born. That's right. Because that's how they're going to have to function. That's right. You see, so we are mm -hmm. too slow for them. Definitely. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. If you ever called your health care provider or your bank, just to illustrate that, last week it said... Um, You've reached so and so, punch this, uh, the menu, uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then, just as you know, oh, the next time I call them, I have to push number five. Well, they've added something else. Every day, every day, things are changing. And the children are equipped to handle it like that. That's right. They so are. when they talk to us and we talk about this little thing here, well, they're way over here already. <laughs> right. Because that's where, they, that's where they are. That's right. And. Um, so I found that if I say to them, uh, I'm a little slow, I'm from a different time, can you kind of bear with me? They will slow down for me. Yes. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. And they will just slow down for me, and when I'm done, they go back to whatever it is that they're doing. I think that a lot of children have been, um, uh, I won't say mistreated, but I mean misunderstood because they're in a different place in their, you know, mm -hmm. minds and, and souls than their parents are. And it's been very difficult for a lot of children to, um, to live with their parents, you know. And I think that's why a lot of times we, everybody says about this generation thing. But each, each person, the parent and the child, need to sit down and talk things out mm -hmm. and see where each, you know, they're coming from. And... Uh, it, it's very interesting to mm -hmm. listen to these children, like you said. Um, we have to give them the compassion and the understanding. And we hope they do the same for us because they're going to be running the world one of these days. Exactly. Now, here, this is the, this is the two-edged sword here. Now, putting them on Redolin, that's what you call it, no? It's not serving their purpose or ours because they have to go at that speed in order to live in their time and help us along because we're getting old. So if we, you know, keep putting them on drugs and... Um, well, we think we're too drug-oriented in this society anyway. Yeah, then they're not going to be equipped to do, to live their life the way they need to, you know. So you might want to think about that the first time somebody says, well, oh, well, he's ADD, let's give him some riddle. And then let's just talk to the child first because just because he doesn't fit in your schedule right this minute, he will tomorrow, you know, so. You may be fitting into his, actually. Ex yeah, so. <laughs> Maybe you're the one that doesn't fit, you know, yeah. like so you said. that's a little food for thought there. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Star people are everywhere, um, all races. Yep, absolutely. All cultures. Mm -hmm. All ages. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
you do past life regressions, mm -hmm. would you happen to know if, if any of the people that you dealt with had memories of other places? Uh, uh, I have done some work on that, and um, the people who weren't abductees, mm -hmm. a lot of them had been um, starseed, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, very calculated, not you know, they, their parents mm -hmm. were chosen right. and so forth and so on. And, um, uh, yeah, usually they're doing something very worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Very few of them are lost in their minds. They know what mm -hmm. they're doing and they know where they're going, uh, especially the ones who have just been seated, so to speak. Um, the ones who, like, in our past, the ancestors had been seated. A lot of us are caught up in the uh, daily egos of, mm -hmm. you know, living. But uh, the ones who are, have just been seated not too long ago are pretty aware of what they're doing. Just like our new children who have mm -hmm. come in here with their spirits just ready to take on this new millennium, um, these people know what they're doing also. So I have had a few, but not a lot. The, they don't usually have problems. Um, on the survey, Dave was talking about um being sensitive to to a humidity sensings. Now we found that abductees have a lot of allergies, chemical allergies like Novocaine and things like that. And it seems like star people they come more in the natural order of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, it's almost like um, they have to uh, become acclimatized. Mm -hmm. You know, and that takes uh, time and. Mm -hmm. uh, you go through certain processes in order to be able to acclimatize, but eventually they do. Mm -hmm. Now, we all live here as human beings, so we have challenges, we have money challenges, we have health challenges, and now um, here we're telling you you have, other <laughs> you have a frequency challenge on top of that. Um, so if you are an employee, you might consider telling the people that work for you, this is what you need to do. This is when I want it on my desk. And give them a free hand how they're going to arrive at fixing it for you because when you go through these, these, <laughs> these horrible changes, you don't know. Um, do you want to go to bed? Do you want to call a doctor? Um, you just feel out of sorts. And then when you multiply this by, I don't know how many. Lots. Uh, lots. And each of. person experienced that individually. Now, we're not talking about everybody, just these groups yeah, of that's people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> most of us understand that and, and we'll say, oh, gee, I'm in orbit, or um, I'm in the force, or I'm in right, the I'll sixth come out. dimension. I'll come out of it pretty soon, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how we work around it. Right. But you take people that this is the first time they heard about this. That's right. That could be pretty spooky. Well, it also could be very awakening, too, mm -hmm. to, to actually have a reason for doing mm -hmm. some of the things they do, you know, or mm -hmm. understanding some of the things that have happened to them. That's That would be a good thing, too. So, Books, um, books that can help you along with how to work around it. Um, I'm going to name mine first. So and yeah, the moral of the story is one person at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, I talk about things like that in my personal experiences and my homemade remedies that work for me, maybe not, you know, for mm -hmm. the next person. Then Barbara Messiniak wrote two books, Bring Us to the Dawn. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the other one is Earth. And um, by the way, the library has all of these, including mine, and I believe there's like a three-week waiting list right now for these books because so many people, you know, are, are reading them. And Barbara explains how you can work around some of these changes. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. It's not unusual for organs to <laughs> just be on the move, you mm -hmm. know, like, um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that they're moving from the left to right, but it's like they, they just, your whole structure, everything is trying to rearrange a little bit. Well, years ago we were told that, we were, that the Earth is moving into the fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, 
a lot of people thought, oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But with all the changes that have been happening, I don't think there's too many people that can say nothing's happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, it does help to read some of these books, get some more understanding, and accept what feels right mm -hmm. to you. Throw out what doesn't. Don't worry about anything. What's going to happen is going to happen. And, um, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I myself like to be informed. Exactly, yeah. And that's what we hope most people would like to do. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who just don't, aren't ready to do it, and mm -hmm. they're not going to do it, and that's fine. You know, live your life and enjoy it and do what you want to do with it, but be aware that there are changes coming. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think there's one person these days that doesn't know something's happening. Something, yeah, but they just don't know what to relate it to. That's right. It's, uh, something isn't quite right. and. But we're so busy with the with the everyday thing that we do, you know. Right. Now you take t Mr. Tesla, Nikolai Tesla, Einstein. Um, we we had interviews with David Adair. Um, oh, yeah. He made reference to Stephen Hawkins. Oh yes, wonderful, um, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So these scientists. So it's not only indigenous people that well they know what's happening, but some of the, the most m more practical scientists they acknowledge that. Pretty soon they're going to have to rewrite some of their protocol because, because of this whole thing. Yes, they, they really do uh, are aware that they're going to have to rewrite a lot of their stuff. Uh, the physics is changing mm -hmm. daily, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the scientists are going, boy, what I thought was right yesterday is definitely not right for today. Yeah, it's just changes. Uh, so there's a lot of really tangible things happening that people can look at and say, yeah, this is this is happening. I can see it happening. Mm -hmm. And of course you have people telling you these things uh, that are happening. And you're you know, you're gonna you're gonna believe some of these people. Like you said, David Adair, you know, people mm -hmm. that, that are in the know. Yeah. Well, now we have introduced you in some of the shows to some people that that were aware of the actual alien. Mm -hmm. "Quote unquote uh, agenda," and they looked exactly like they would on their home planet. Mm -hmm. So star people uh, is—they don't really come in that category. They sort of look like yeah, you and like, me. That's right. Mm -hmm. And your next door neighbor mm -hmm. and well, your I, children. I believe that the, the star people who seated uh, and are seating are uh, the Homo sapien type. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are other uh, entities here, however, that aren't that don't look like exactly. us. Exactly. But uh, you know, that's another part of tolerance and understanding mm -hmm. that we have to acquire because I believe pretty soon we're going to be seeing these beings. Exactly. Can you find a substitution for the word star seeding? For 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 the friends that don't know what to do with the word seeding. Uh. I would say, uh, now back in uh, thousands of years ago, uh, DNA manipulation. Mm -hmm. um, I would say now that it's more like um, they, are, are, they were our ancestors, mm -hmm. you know. So um, the fact that you have the blood of, of mm -hmm. someone from another galaxy, planet, universe, whatever, in you means that you are a star seed person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're, you know, you're different in, in, than many, many millions of other people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say that the DNA manipulation was, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and the funny thing is that one of the scientists is beginning to, she's looking back genetically and finding this out that we have been, our DNA has been messed around with a little bit, so. Mm -hmm. You know, what we were supposed to be before that happened, or going to be, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, so it, this has nothing to do with your religious belief oh, or, no. or anything mm -hmm. like that. This no. is just, uh, this is getting to be fact as we know it, and we, we, ha we have to change our awareness. I don't have anything around here. I, if I did, I want to, um, I don't have anything around, but anyway, Sometimes I illustrate that with a um, with a ball. Mm -hmm. and just just imagine that um, y you are a screw here, and we're trying to screw you into this ball to secure you. 
the right. ball be in the earth and you mm -hmm. you just, just screw here. And then it's real easy when you first start out. And the tighter you tie it, the harder it gets for you to be bolted down. Mm -hmm. And that's about how we are where we are right now. If you're not screwed on right or <laughs> tight, you gotta fall off. Right. You know, so and ever once in a while uh, you know, for movement, a little rattle here and a little rattle there, th this little wash it gets a loose. Bit there. So you have to double check to see if you're still where you're supposed to be. And I think that's where we are in our evolution of our time. Yes, we are, mm -hmm. uh, very much so. Uh, awareness is uh, springing forth on some people, I mean mm -hmm. just by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, they, they don't want to. Yeah. They don't want to know about it. And uh, nobody's forcing them to know about it. But there, there's got to be things they're looking at and going, boy, I don't know, this doesn't fit the criteria I had 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, so. It doesn't. Everything it doesn't. just flips from yesterday it was like that, today it's like that. That's right. And, and, the, and that's where we're going. And, uh, you know, it, I mean, 70% of religions talk about things, even I'm going to the religion for a minute here, which I normally don't do, by the way, but uh, a lot of their teachings do have people from the sky. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. It's been from the time man was able to look up and see uh, odd things in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, it's been happening from the beginning. The book the Gods of Eden by, I think it's Richard Bremler. Mm -hmm. um, he writes about, um, and we made reference to this before, he wrote about extraterrestrials. But uh, no, what he did, he, he was a historian. He wanted to find out why man is so warlike. Yes. And he kept running into extraterrestrials. No and matter so, what he did. <laughs> no matter what he did. And he was very disturbed, so he quit writing for 10 years, and then eventually went and finished his book. But one of the other things, and that's why I'm bringing this book up, that he noticed was that every time around the change of the millennium, you know, whether it was from 17 to 18, uh, 18 to 19, and so on, there was some external or off-earthly, off-planet something. Uh, it was, sometimes it was a plague, um, the corruption of a whole empire, and they always made reference to up. Mm -hmm. You know, while well, these clouds came in and that caused the, in, in their folklore and things. So there might be something to it because these are the times that we live in. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, if we look up and see something and, mm -hmm. you know, it could be on TV the next minute, you know, I mean, it's not going to be able to be hidden from the world like it was isolated in those times, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, no one, you know, from one country to the next, no one knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. But the boy now, there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. There's no isolation anymore, so. Lady stopped me the other day and she said, wait, wait, she says, are you the local discovery lady? And I thought about it for a minute and I said, well, yeah, I guess I could be. And she says, I, I have something for you. And she gave me some earrings, they were dinosaurs. They were shaped like a dinosaur. And uh, so I thanked her. And then she told me that we're not the only people talking about this. She said she, she, she channel serves, and we talk about one thing, and she'll go, I think it was 47, and here they're talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. just so you know, we're not fishing this out of the air, and uh, talk to your neighbors. Um, That's right. You know, don't say, excuse me, are you from another planet? <laughs> Third rock from the Earth, from the sun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but kind of look into that. Uh, it's not going to change your life or anything. No. It just uh, sometimes helps us understand things. Any personal thoughts? We, we're almost out of time again. Hmm. It's like... Well, um, I think just uh, like I said, if you're, if you're inquisitive about something, there's answers out there. If you're feeling funny about things, uh, you're not the only one. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the vibrational change is definitely showing for most people and um, understand our children mm -hmm. our new children basically that's it I think that we need to be just very very aware of what's happening right now mm -hmm. can we prove this to you in triplicate probably not no but we are sitting here we are living 
um, testimony that <laughs> these things happen because those are the things that we go through lots yeah, of times. Absolutely. You know? And so if we, we put a little light in your way of looking at things, then we are extremely happy. Summer is just about gone. Um, we are going to be with you till at least January, so um, it's almost time to take a little poll of our own. Um, tell us what kind of shows would you like to continue, um, mm -hmm. if at all. Um, Put your name in the hat for a reading. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. We still do. Yeah, we do. We still do readings and um, help people get along with things of high strangeness. Uh, nature, <laughs> yeah. We were really happy that we was able to share a spirit wolf with you. And uh, well. That didn't take long, and our hour is over again. Well, that was good. So it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Next, we we'll see you next week. Bye.